What's up guys, welcome back to The Wolf's Den. This is my weekly podcast where we go over everything film and gaming. So kick back, relax, grab your coffee, your alcohol, your ganja, whatever relaxes you, chills you out. I got a pretty good show for you guys ahead, so it's going to be pretty pretty fun, pretty awesome. I got my vodka right here, my little mixer, should be stellar. Uh, before we get into all the, the topics, you know, the headlines and, and discussions, I do want to kind of briefly go over you know what movies and what films are coming out this week and you know what came out you know middle of last week because you know the mario movie came out on a wednesday so strange but uh but it is saturday so we kind of are in like the middle of two weeks discussion so uh <laughs> i'll start off with the games because it's a shorter list uh one actually hit playstation plus it's called meet your maker i haven't really gotten a chance to to really get into it i've seen a lot of gameplay online but honestly it's it looks awesome. It looks really interesting. It looks what the thing I took away from it is it looks like kind of like a Doom or like a or a, a just just any old like a like the Wolfenstein, the old Quakes. You know, it has that style to it. But it it, it reminds me of like if they plucked Doom guy <laughs> and smashed him into like the Cube franchise. I don't know if you guys seen that movie from the the 90s and the early 2000s the Q movies because that's literally the concept of the game is that you know you uh you build these levels and you can you can play people's levels and you can make levels all that and the concept the whole thing of the game is to get out of this kind of like puzzle like maze you know you start in one spot and you're supposed to get out of the of the box of the of the cube the facility or whatever you want to call it so it that's the first thing that came into my head. I made a comment on a YouTube video and I got some uh, I got some likes on it. There, people appreciated that. No one thought of that. I was like, this is literally the Cube movie <laughs> in a video game format, you know. So that that was really cool. Uh, I might check it out. I don't know. It doesn't really look like my type of game, but it does look. You know, if you're into Fortnite, if you're into Minecraft, uh, any uh, survival game. I'm sure you're gonna love to just make these these levels really confusing and hectic and just crazy. So you know, I think there's a place for for multiple people. If you like diving in hell scenarios, you're gonna love it too. So <laughs> uh, the next game that's that's actually coming out in a couple days. The next, all these games are pretty much uh, next week at this point. This one's uh, April 14th. Windows and the Switch are August. Or no, that no, it actually came out on Windows and the Switch. Well, I don't know if they're talking about the the old game or not. That's strange. I, I don't know if they're because this page is just Road 96, but it's the expansion to Road 96. Uh, I forget what it's what it's called. Uh, damn, I I just seen it. It's like Road Zero or something like that. And you know, I, I was. I really liked Road 96. I played that on Game Pass when it came out, and oh, it's called Mile Zero. Okay, so I think it's hitting everybody in April. I'm just gonna assume. Um, but yeah, Road 96, Mile Zero. It's it's like a rhythm game or something. It's it's nothing like the the actual you know original release, Road 96. You know, so that's that's kind of disappointing. I was honestly I was kind of swamped with with games and the TV shows I'm trying to catch up on, all this shit, I was like, man, I really don't need to play a Road to 96 prequel, you know, but, uh, and I'm probably not gonna play this because it doesn't look as interesting as uh, as the game that I played, but that's neither here nor there. I don't, I'm not really that bothered by that. Uh, the next one is Sherlock Holmes, The Awakened, is also coming out next week. And, you know, I think it looks, it looks interesting. It doesn't look... I don't know if I'm going to be into... I just... Eh, I don't know. I'm playing uh, Judgment, which we'll get into later. And I'm just not a super big fan of detective games. Especially if the shit is really confusing. Like, like it... I mean, I guess it should be for a detective game. But I'm just... I don't... I just start to lose interest sometimes. You know, the game really has to be something. You know, like L.A. Noire. Top-notch detective game. Love that game. But some games just don't do it right, you know? So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I guess it's just a remaster, I guess. A remake. Okay, it's a remake. Oh, God, thank God. <laughs> but yeah, that's coming out next week as well. And then Ghostwire Tokyo is hitting Xbox Series X and S next week as well. Uh, that's kind of cool. Oh, no. I'm, I totally just thought the Series S was a last-gen system. I was, like, thinking uh, 
so it was on PS or it wasn't on PS4, but they'll put it on there. But it, no, that's just stupid. <laughs> I had a brain fart right there. Man, it's the Xbox One is just gone then at that point, I guess. The Xbox One X. Yep, it's just so it's not it's not here anymore. It died. Uh, but yeah, Ghostwire Tokyo is coming. So if you're if you if you didn't get a chance to play it, if you've been waiting out, you know, if you don't have a PC or a PS5, now is your time. If you really I mean, it was okay. I, I'm not going to say it was the greatest game of all time. It definitely, uh, I lost, I started to lose interest further on as I went. So it's definitely not the greatest. But as for movies, uh, obviously the Super Mario Bro movie is out. It's actually really popular right now. I, we went and saw it. I'm probably going to speak a little bit in a little bit about my thoughts on the movie. But that is out. You can go check that out. Uh, Air is also out. That's the Michael Jordan slash jordan's shoe brand uh documentary style not I, I don't know what i don't ever know what to call these movies the movies that are basically documentaries but they're not an actual documentary you know it's like a a drama uh re retelling story you know i don't I, I don't know i don't know how to describe it but it looks awesome it has a huge cast jason bateman uh viola davis ben affleck matt damon chris tucker it's Marlon Wayans, I didn't, that, yeah, it's, it's gonna be awesome, you know, I, I can't wait to see it, I was thinking of seeing it in theaters, but I, I really don't know if I'm gonna get to, with all the shit coming out next week, and the, the weeks ahead and shit, but, uh, <laughs> I'll wait until Amazon, I guess, it's gonna come to Amazon eventually, so, that should, that should be awesome, uh, the next one is Owen Wilson's Paint, that is also out, I guess it's, I, it's like a spoof film, you know, cause it's, it's it's totally Bob Ross, but uh, he's called Carl Nargle, <laughs> a fictional character based on Bob Ross. So I don't know. I've heard it's really funny, but you can never trust trailers. You can't trust Facebook comments. You can't trust anything anymore. So I'm probably just going to pass on this. It's an IFC film, so I don't even know if I'm going to be able to watch it unless I really feel like, you know, renting it. Not, not every movie deserves, you know, $25. And that's sad. You know, every movie should, but it's not true. It's just not. Uh, what's next? Uh, On a Wing and a Prayer. I guess that's going to Prime. I should check that out. That came out yesterday. It's a Dennis Quaid movie and Heather Graham. So it's a movie about Easter Sunday 2009. I'm wondering if this is a true story or not. I imagine it is. Uh... A pilot died of a heart attack so it's it's like a flying movie i think he has to maybe land the plane <laughs> i don't know I, I i really didn't i think i saw a trailer but it, it just was it wasn't rememberable you know uh and then something called chupa going to netflix as well yesterday uh, i don't know what that is it's that uh, what is, oh the chupa Chup, oh this is gonna fuck me up you all are gonna think i'm stupid uh, Chupacabra, I got it. Aha! It's just <laughs> Chupacabra. Uh, movie about hunting Chupacabra. Okay. And okay. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. It has a. I can't pronounce his name, but he's an awesome Mexican actor. And then Christian Slater's also in it, so that's okay. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to think about that, but it's on Netflix. Am I? <laughs> Excuse me, I might check it out. I might. Uh, but yeah, next week, uh, Renfield is coming out. That's the Nicolas Cage and Nicholas Holt movie, which is about, you know, Nicolas Cage being Dracula in this, like, dark comedy. Like, a dark comedy. That's that's going to be awesome. Well, I mean, it is horror. Like, dark horror comedy. I, it's gothic maybe i don't know how you would describe this but it looks fucking it looks good i might i might see it I'm, i definitely might see this in theaters but there are some some competition for this week we got the pope's exorcist that is you know russell crowe's uh this is also a retelling of one of the pope's exorcists in like i think the 70s or so whenever it's taking place uh doesn't say the plot yet but you know it looks interesting it looks like a a theater movie you know where Renfield doesn't necessarily seem like I have to see it in theaters but the Pope's Exorcist looks like it's it's gonna be best in theaters you know 
So that's that's what I what I'm getting at. So I might see that one. And then there's a uh, Mafia Mama, which uh, Tony Coletti is. Uh, it's it's this action comedy. I, I'm, I'm uh, I really don't. Monica Bellu uh, Monica Belushi. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably fucking that up. And I'm Italian too, so that's shitty. <laughs> but she's also in it. She's a really popular Italian actress. She's fucking sexy too. So, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to go to the theater to see it though. You know, I don't care that much. But that's what's coming out, you know. A couple things here and there. Nothing too crazy. Uh, but I'll let you guys know if, if you know, I'm probably not going to pick up any of those games. I'll probably wait for the Sherlock Holmes to, to get reviewed. I already played Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, Meet Your Maker, and Road 96. It's, you know, they really, really don't have nothing this week. <laughs> we got Sherlock Holmes, and if you didn't get to play Ghostwire Tokyo, it's there. But, you know, real light week on, on video games. And then movies, a lot of, couple streaming. I didn't expect the, the On a Wing and a Prayer and the Chupa movie, but I have to check those out. Uh, and hopefully Air hits Amazon soon. I imagine they're going to put it on Amazon as soon as uh, it, it gets taken down from theaters. I'd imagine. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, let's start with the film topics. I want to go over those first. Uh, first off, I put out the reaction video. Uh, and I don't think, you know, I didn't have a lot of time to really talk about it, but uh, the Secret Invasion trailer, I gotta say that Marvel might have won back some goodwill with Secret Invasion. This new trailer was amazing. Uh, I was hearing from some some people that the trailers have not been completely accurate, though, um, where they're showing, they're basically doing the, the, the anti-woke trailer and then when you go to the theater, or in this case, when you watch it on Disney Plus, they're gonna they're gonna wokeify it and disappoint us all, which would really suck. I hope that's not the case with Secret Invasion, because it it just looks it just looks amazing. It's so serious and dark. It's it feels like peak Marvel, you know, like uh, Secret or not uh, the Winter Soldier, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Captain America, Civil War. Uh, Infinity War it just has that tone of like that something is going on you know like I don't know it just it seems like there should always be a sense of dread when there should be a sense of dread you know that's just the way I I feel about some things but especially if it's like I don't know almost in all cases really like even if you go back to Tobey Maguire Spider-Man the first one yet yeah, it had its you know everything should have its light moments if if it's if it's uh possible but you know, when the action starts and the drama's there, it needs to be crazy. It needs to be awesome, you know? And really, this is the perfect. Seeker Invasion is no... There should be no jokes throughout that fucking show. There should... It, this should just be a serious show all the way through, which is what I want. You know, I love serious comic book adaptations. I feel like that's the way to go. The less jokes, the better. Um, you know, some case, like Deadpool needs the jokes. That's his character, Spider-Man. You know, I get it when it's, when it's necessary for the character. But some cases, even if, like, say Spider-Man was in this, I wouldn't want Spider-Man joking all the time throughout Secret Invasion, you know? Sometimes it's just, you know, it shows more of the character if if the plot line and the sub-arcs affect them and change them. You're not used to seeing Spider-Man, like, fucking mopey and, you know, kind of stressed and looking like he has anxiety about a situation. Usually he's on a shit, cracking jokes, swinging and shit. <laughs> so I don't know. Hopefully it's it has some weight, you know. The and the plot is is not garbage in the writing. Hopefully they got a good writing team, not the not whoever's been writing everything. <laughs> but not to mention the cast. I feel like they they got the the one bitch from uh, Game of Thrones. She's in it. I always for, forget her name, but she's awesome. Um, she made the one of the Terminator movies. She was awesome in that. Uh, and then you have Sam Jackson of all that's he's amazing every time no matter what uh, a couple other actors throughout it too that they're just amazing they gotta they have it that they there's right there <laughs> it's right there it's in in arm's length you know just don't fuck it up don't drop the ball please 
don't don't drop it i just that's one this i need this you know <laughs> we have nothing else this year you know for marvel we have guardians which i don't know how that's gonna go you know that's gonna be really i don't know you know people are gonna die the the new trailer said it so i didn't watch it but that's what the trailer was called i know rocket's probably gonna die drax is probably gonna die for sure you know so it's it's gonna be i don't know if they're gonna nail it for for the trilogy we'll see i'm still gonna go see it but other than that what do we got we have before this because i didn't know secret invasion was coming out so before this all i had in my mind was guardians and then the marvels is at the end of the year and then there's no tv shows everything got delayed you know so i was just basically done with marvel for the for the year because the marvels movie is gonna it's just gonna be terrible you can you just can you feel it i can feel it you know and as for dc i thought this is dc's year you know they got uh shazam which didn't turn out to be that <laughs> impressive which is sad i think it would have definitely fucking just done amazing if it was shazam versus black adam and then Superman made a cameo with Henry Cavill. They would it would have printed money. It would have printed money. At least some money, you know, maybe not amazing, no billion dollars or whatever, but you know, it would have done it could have at least made up for the cost of the budget at the very least, you know? That's what I thought. Uh and what else? You have the Flash and now we have Blue Beetle and Aquaman coming out. So it looks like it's DC's year. They they have it all. They also have the net ready. All they got to do is just swoop it. They can do it if, if these movies are done decently, you know. So, but yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I hope they do it justice. You know, it's coming out in June. I think it was June 21st. I cannot wait. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be super dope. Super dope. Mm. But uh, next, I wanted to uh, talk about the Super Mario Bros. movie. And uh, before I even get into this, let me just say, like I think the Rotten Tomato score is like 47% from the critics. The audience is like 97, 96. And I just want to say, before you know, we get into it, I'm not a big Nintendo fan, you know. I'm a bigger Nintendo fan than, you know, the, you know, uh, like the PlayStation fanboys and the Xbox fanboys that, you know, they rag on Nintendo a lot and, and whatnot say, you know, Mario is, is trash, Zelda's trash, all this. And I, I can get where they're coming from too. Cause growing up, Nintendo was definitely the third wheel most definitely, but you just couldn't deny, you know, Zelda and Mario were dope. They just were, you know, you have Mario Kart and smash like there were iconic ips that nintendo put out in my lifetime i just couldn't deny that and yeah did i did i pass on the wii did i pass on the wii u yeah i, I mean i have them now and i have a little bit of a collection but i'm not like i'm not crazy about the wii and the wii u series that was just uh kind of disappointing just didn't feel right but it made them a lot of money with the wii you know the wii u not so much because <laughs> But uh, the Switch, I got a big, I got a decent, you know, size collection. I got Mario games. I, I, I can have fun with it. It's not, you know, I'm not a hater. <laughs> it's fucking video games, people. And, and whatnot. And I don't want people to think I'm a super big fanboy. Because I'm going to stick up for this movie. Because I feel like it's being done very dirty. And I don't understand why. Like, I don't watch uh, trailers that often. Usually, those trailers that I watch with you guys and make reactions that's all that's all i see i don't like watching and that's just to get a grasp and honestly i hate it because sometimes with this new age they they expose the entire plot they show all the actors there's no surprises and it's uh that kind of ruins the the movie experience sometimes but you know i'm a, i'm trying to be a youtuber usually i don't watch well i mean i do but uh I don't know i try not to watch trailers is what i should say like guard like any marvel i usually do not watch you know i watch like the first reveal trailer that shows nothing you know but um what was the point i was making uh <laughs> i try not to watch things i try not to look at reviewer scores or you know 
Rotten Tomatoes really doesn't matter at this point, but sometimes it does make me wonder. Like, I was a little curious. Ugh. Excuse me. Um, I was a little curious because it's 47%, but then, you know, Chris Pratt's in it. You know, he's a very right-wing conservative. It doesn't really surprise me that everybody's review bombing it just for him. That would, I, that I wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. <laughs> oh my god, that fucking coke is... Oh my god. Anyway, I, I fucking, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt if Chris Pratt, him alone is what these, these reviewers and these new perspective takes on the fucking film. And I, it's just, it blows my mind. Anyway, I don't look at shit is my point. <laughs> like I'm just getting pissed off thinking in my head. I, I try not to look at anything. So I went to this movie, we saw it. I had a ton of fun. I'm not a big Nintendo guy, but I got most of the references. Uh, I loved the animation. The animation was awesome. The voice acting was surprisingly good other than Seth Rogen. But as for like a young Donkey Kong, I could see it, I guess. I, I don't know. I think he would have... I don't know. Maybe he would have sounded better as an older Donkey Kong. <laughs> you know, not playing like this t like this 20s real young... Don I don't know. I just... Something could have been done there. He could have been the king, you know? I don't know. I, I don't know. But... Uh, other than that, Luigi was perfect. He was probably the best out of all of them. Uh, Mario was for Chris Pratt. I think he, I think he did a good job with it, you know. And uh, the princess didn't really give a fuck. Um, Bowser, Jack Black killed it. Even though I did feel like his singing was a little out of place, but you know it's Jack Black. You, that was like expected. That's probably why they hired him. They wrote that in the script. They're like, what if we make Bowser sing on a piano? His love, and they're like, who can we? Jack Black <laughs> you know I don't know maybe, or maybe he pitched him that idea it was like what if we make a trilogy of songs to play through the whole fucking film uh, that was probably if anything the the more annoying part but it didn't annoy me you know it was kind of just kind of corny which I think it was meant to be corny you know but I don't know uh, really didn't have too much thoughts on that uh, another big Point. Well, I want to say they started it off perfect. The first 20, 25 minutes is perfect introduction to Mario and Luigi, their life, how they ended up in the, the Mushroom Kingdom. It's, it was done amazing. That was some top tier anima animation. It looked incredible. The water looks like water, like real life water. <laughs> it was it was impeccable. It was it was amazing. It, it really made you look at it and just, and this is a kid's movie. I'm like, holy shit, man. This is this is this just looks really crisp you know and accurate they look just like the video game counterparts you know and and it's kind of weird because they make them out to be like they're in this world and they're like midgets it's a really strange concept everyone else is normal size and then mario and luigi are like midgets and their their family are midgets but they're i don't know it's a weird way to look at it but you wouldn't I would have, you know, some people maybe would have thought that everyone was midgets in Mario's world, but no, they're just, you know, just doing, going fucking duos on it. But, <laughs> but you know, it's uh, but they did a good introduction. They had like some uh, some Pixar, like uh, emotional, you know, backstory kind of like Mario's a failure, you know, this type, and it was kind of sad. I was like, oh my god, man, Mario's a failure. Like he's this, and he's gonna be a, you know praised and he's a god when he goes to the mushroom kingdom like like this man's on the up and up you know you're feeling for it you know you you know what's to come you know and uh so it keeps going they end up in the mushroom kingdom some people were saying that the a big mistake of the film was that mario and luigi got separated basically the entire film is they're separated from that point on uh until probably the last 20 minutes 25 minutes uh, they're separated and people are saying that's a big mistake because they had such a good you know chemistry and I agree they had really good chemistry but I think this sets up more for Luigi as a character on his own even though he didn't really do much throughout the film uh, this sets him up for uh, hopefully a haunted mansion movie that would be awesome I'd, I would I would actually genuinely like to see that because I really liked that game on the GameCube back in the day I like Luigi for some reason uh, just because he's go he's just nervous and goofy and a scaredy cat, you know it's he's a cool character, man. <laughs> he's a cool character, and uh, that would be really cool. And I think you need to separate them to do that. And 
like because then it would just be a mario and luigi uh duo together you know and now it's like they can do their own thing go on their own adventures have their own movies but also come back together and when they do the chemistry is awesome and you know we'd appreciate it when it happens you know so i think that's it is it didn't ruin the movie for me you know there's a lot of other scenes that were super it was a lot of fan service you know a lot of fan service i really enjoyed it you know the Don the donkey kong uh little bit in the film showing the actual donkey kong like the old classic game incorporated into the movie that was really clever even the way that they just turn everything 2d fucking it just looks so cool like you, you can't not fucking smile you know it's it's cool now some people are complaining why couldn't we get more of that shut the fuck up bro we got we got <laughs> we got some fucking gold they're already gonna do a sequel just shut up it's this is a start you know you watch Iron Man and guess what? You're like, oh, why couldn't you do it? Okay, I was I was about to botch that whole thing. Listen, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself in my head. But would you see Iron Man and then in Iron Man, you're like, uh, why wasn't there the Avengers? You're like, no, you're fucking, you're thinking of the future. Like, oh, I can't wait till they get to the Avengers. That's going to be fucking dope. You know, that's the way I feel that people are kind of coming off a little fucking, I don't know, just bratty about the whole situation. Uh, it ended good. It had a good climax. Very nice and steamy. And, <laughs> and then uh, then I came home. And me and my girlfriend were talking through uh, the ride home. Because she was a big Sonic fan growing up. I was more Mario, if anything. Like, compared to, you know, Sonic. And uh, we watched both the Sonic movies. I love both of them. Great movies. But I thought Mario... It was, it was a better movie for the fans. You know, Sonic was a good movie that we got like we got sonic on film cool but i feel like mario did a better job at at handling you know just being accurate you know and for there's a lot of fan service a lot of callbacks which i think sonic is getting to now you know with the third one they're going to be doing a lot like shadow can't wait to see him in a movie and be all dramatic when he says shit <laughs> or damn something something like that but uh so we were just kind of like going back and forth comparing which one we thought was better and she eventually came to the conclusion that mario was better than the sonic movie because it it had her uh it was entertaining to her the entire length you know so that's that was my perspective and then i turned on youtube and i turned on my computer and saw the entire fucking world shitting bricks over this movie and just saying you know like the plot isn't as deep as it should be there should be more uh, it should be Mario and Luigi going to save the princess. It shouldn't be the princess and and Mario Going to find Donkey Kong which Seth Rogen like is really bad and and it ruins the film and they should have had more 2d Scenes and all these complaints that just I don't know it just seemed really forced like I had a good time with what I got You know, I, I didn't expect too much more You know If anything, I thought they did a really good job I, you know, minus Jack Black singing, got a little old after the third time, but I didn't have anything to, and I thought these people were actually going to, you know, say the movie was good. I really did. I thought like the Angry Joe show was going to, and, and, uh, I think I haven't watched the, the Chandler talks, but, uh, there's the other guy, I forget his fucking name. He's a dude that always has the whiskey glass. It's, uh, but he also, they all just kind of like were disappointed, not Dis, like some were like angry joe show was really disappointed they gave it a five out of ten which is just fucking insane and some other some others like really wanted mario and luigi to be together throughout the film which i can understand that to a point i'm not I'm not gonna dock it just because of that though you know this is just a starter up movie who gives a fuck i i don't know i didn't have a problem with that um and just and then you know obviously the one bitch <laughs> she was like since when is mario a cat She's like, unless you're into furries, and I know the Chinese people are really into furries, and I'm like, are you fucking... <laughs> or in the cats, I think. Oh my god, I was like, lady. Like, is this, is this our fucking reviewers? These are our reviewers? Like, I always used to count on fucking YouTubers to, to say, you know, tell, tell it how it is. And the movie's fun. It, it makes you chuckle at times, like that fucking star that's, that, uh, that's in the dungeon. Every time that bitch was on screen, I was, I was fucking cracking up, dude. I don't know why, but those lines, the, the dark humor, the dark, uh, suicidal, 
fucking shit, man. That was fucking that that was so out of place. I was not expecting that. You know, the little things like that. They were awesome. You know, I, I just don't get what the fuck is up with every, like what stick is up everybody's ass that you wanted this deep plot. I don't I don't get it. I really don't. I think some of these reviewers are out of touch. Like I, I don't like to speak on YouTubers that much, but I've just I've watched the Angry Joe show for almost my entire time being on YouTube, watching videos and shit. And uh, I just don't think that they are, they're not, they're not really uh, meant to be movie critique, uh, movie critiques. They just aren't, they're, uh, they're gamers. And they really should stick to games because they, they're very biased for some reason. I don't know if it's politically, if they don't like Chris Pratt, because they barely ever talk about Chris Pratt and he's, he does a lot of great things. Um, I know Jurassic World Dominion kind of sucked, but uh, I don't know. They just seem a little weird. You know, they're given The Last of Us, which is totally flawed. Nines out of ten, eight, sevens. And then this movie that is completely accurate is a five. That just seems really, really shitty. You know, it really, and even in, like the regular critics that it's at like a 47. So most are around that range. That's just insane. It's a really fun movie. And many people, a lot of reviewers are saying, if you're a Nintendo fan, you're going to love this film. But, uh, and then that should be it. It, that should that'd be end of discussion. That was made for them. Like, what the fuck do you think? Like you go to a Marvel movie and you don't get Marvel. <laughs> like when you're a Marvel fan, you go to a Marvel movie and you get nothing that you are familiar with. Like that would be ass. Like, I just don't understand the thinking on that. And they say for a general audience, everything's going to go over your head. You're not going to know anything. That's complete bullshit. My girlfriend don't know shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> she don't know shit about Mario. And she had a good time. The entire fucking movie. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it, man. That is, it's really frustrating. You can tell I'm irritated by this. Because for once I thought like... <laughs> The internet was going to be like happy, you know, about a movie like everyone was going to be praising this movie for, you know, the, like because so many video game adaptations have been coming out that are just completely fucking at, like uncharted. Terrible, not a terrible movie, but as for an adaptation, fucking terrible. And this is completely accurate when I didn't even think that it was going to be possible. You have Chris Pratt and what's his face from Always Sunny in Philadelphia playing Mario and Luigi. Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong, Jack Black's Bowser, like, this doesn't sound like it's gonna be good, <laughs> and it was, I think, I don't know, we just need to give them some fucking credit, you know, like, that is so frustrating to me, when people are just, they're cynical about dumb shit, like, this is a kid's movie, this is a, this is a kid's movie, my guy, I, don't, I just don't get it, one too many shots will get me irritated about Mario, apparently. So, there's that. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is Blue Beetle. Uh, I did a reaction video on it, on that as well. It was a it was a good time. I think this, you know, going to be fun to watch. But uh, the, what the director has stated is just very irritating. I did want to talk about this. Now, the George Lopez... Batman's a fascist. That's one thing, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why. It seems forced. It's not really funny. Uh, it just, I don't know. I mean, it just didn't. Unless you're a huge George, George Lopez fan, I don't think really that hits with anybody. I don't know. Like, you don't want to hear Batman and fascist in the same sentence. It doesn't really make sense. I don't know. That's just me. But the director then went on to state that he hates Trump voters. And I think this is a massive fail. You know, whether you're a Trump supporter, Biden, whatever the fuck you are, who care, who really cares at the end of the day, why does it got to be in our movies? Why does it have to be in our movies? These are separate stories. We don't need to have Trump and Biden in our, like, in, like subconsciously in the movie. We don't need that. It doesn't, I just don't, and it's always been kind of like that way. You know, through like Bush and Obama, we've had a lot of dumb presidents you know uh kind of established because of bush just dumb presidents then obama we got more black presidents in the in the film industry and then we had trump and now it's like 
I just, it's fucking stupid. Just stop. I, I, it's, it's dumb to inject this shit in our movies that clearly do not fucking need it. You know, this ain't like a political movie or a satire. This is a comic book movie. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I think it, it only hurts your own movie. Like, why would you go and say that? Like, like, yeah, you hate Trump voters. That's fine and dandy. Whatever the fucking case may be. What is, whatever's wrong with that, right? But keep it away from your movie. That's your movie. You're directing the movie. You want the movie to do good. You want everybody to go see it. Don't say that. <laughs> like, what happened? Like, I don't know if he thinks that that's going to boost it. Like, can they really be that naive? Like, I don't know. Like, I just don't get it. I don't get that, man. It just... Because I was thinking, you know, I hope this does good. Because if it is a good movie, I want it to do good. Because... You know, a Blue Beetle 2. Like, maybe DC needs some good, you know, starters in their fucking lineup. And then you then you hear this. It's just... Damn. 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 <laughs> so, hopefully, that doesn't negatively affect the film. But we'll obviously see. Because uh, the more crazy politics gets and all this, this stupid shit that happens, I think... People might just be on the fucking verge of like, if anything is said that I don't like, fuck that. <laughs> and it's just, so you don't know. We have no idea what's going to happen. Which sucks, but whatever. Uh, J.K. Rowling is also involved in a new HBO Harry Potter reboot series. And apparently the world hates her, so this show is going to kill people. Quote unquote, from many news articles. It's going to kill people. Uh, the meltdowns are just crazy, super insane. My bigger question is what the show is even about. But uh, but whatever, yeah. That's <laughs> I just want to know what it's about. Like, are you recasting Harry? Obviously, you have to if it's gonna be called Harry Potter, unless they're like using Harry Potter as a title, like like a universe title, which would be kind of a little weird, but. Is it like the Harry Potter universe as this new series? I don't know. Because I don't know who could play Harry. Who could play Harry Potter and that isn't Daniel Radcliffe? You know? I, I don't I don't know who could do... Like, why? Why? <laughs> that just seems like a cash grab. Um, Tetris. I also wanted to talk about Tetris that hit Apple TV and I watched it. It's a great movie. It's oddly more serious than I imagined. You know, I really thought it was going to be this, like, kind of like, not slapsticky, but, like, really uh, dramatic rendition of what actually happened. Like, a course of events told in, like, a Wolf of Wall Street manner. You know, just, like, off the wall. Not exactly how it happened, but, you know, we're going to exaggerate it a little bit type of way. And, uh, oddly more serious. I have no idea how accurate it was. Uh, but man, it was a thrill ride. It really was. If you're a gamer, there's a lot of history depicted. That's that's. Uh, it, it was a nice surprise and kind of made it even more worth watching. Like if you go back and rewatch it, it's kind of like a cool little history lesson on gaming, and that's that's kind of cool. You know, I expected them to show the Game Boy a bit and then just focus on the Soviet plotline. And greatly, gratefully, uh, the the industry players are shown through most of the film from start to finish they're all they're involved in pretty much everything going on uh if you got apple tv it's a must watch if not hit the free trial get a little free trial watch it it's worth it it's definitely a fun time and it's uh it was a surprise i, di I didn't think i was gonna like it that much you know i thought i was gonna be interested but i didn't know how interested you know but it turned out to be a fun time so that's awesome that was that was a cool time uh, we're also getting a new live action Street Fighter film. So that's uh, coming from Legendary Pictures. In this new era of video game adaptations, it, I, you know, I got my fingers crossed. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be hopeful. It's got to be better than the 90s version uh, with uh, Claude Van Damme. But uh, we'll see. Or Van I fucking don't. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> I was like, did I say his name right? I think that's how you say his name. I might have just botched it, but I don't, I don't really care. But yeah, hopefully we get, we get a good Street Fighter film. That's like 
action packed as fuck. That would be really nice. I can't have no scrawny Street Fighters, please. Don't do it the pull a Dragon Ball. That would really suck. Uh, also been catching up on some shows as well. Uh, Perry Mason and the Yellow Jackets. Those are still coming out though. So, you know, those are just like once a week. Those are great shows though. Uh, Perry Mason's on HBO. Uh, Yellow Jackets is on Paramount Plus. Both great shows. Or well, it's on Showtime, but I think I get it through Paramount Plus. But uh, they're great shows. Really awesome content. Uh, I need to finish the Boardwalk Empire. Get on that eventually. I started Rabbit Hole, but that's still going too. I kind of want to wait until it's done so I can just watch it. You know, binge it because it's uh it's a crazy ride. I I didn't expect it. Did not expect it. Uh, it's really well done. With the first episode, I thought I was getting like leverage vibes. If you ever watched that TV show back in the day, but now it's just kind of all twisted, and I don't. I have no idea where it's going. But I like Keith or Sutherland. Keith or Sutherland. Uh, Keith or Sutherland. See Keith. I oh, fuck him. <laughs> Keith or Sutherland. Um, but yeah. Those are, those are some great shows. 80 for Brady also hit streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Might watch that tonight at some point. I don't know. Uh, that's just like, I don't know, like a, a, a wholesome movie, I guess. Probably My girlfriend will probably be into it more. Even though I do like a couple of the old ladies. Like Sandy, uh, ah, fuck. <laughs> uh, let me look up the fucking the cast. Because I, I do like that actor. Uh, 80 for Brady. Oh, Sally Field and Lily Tomlin. Those are both and Jane Fonda too, even though she don't look the same as I remember that name. But yeah, that'd be a cool movie to watch. You know, that'd be that'd be nice. But that's about it for the for the film topics. I really didn't have too much to talk about. Mostly, I wanted to talk about Mario, obviously, but uh, <laughs> I was just getting a fucking headache there for a second, thinking about all the fucking shit I was watching, you know, but we can talk about the gaming side of the show. Uh, what I've been playing on, on the gaming side, I played Warhammer 40k, Dark Tide. I wasn't expecting a Destiny-style shooter. That's what I'm getting so far. Looked much more like a Left 4 Dead, like, level-based game, and it's uh, it's definitely surprised me. I, I'm, I'm going to have to play it after I, you know, free up some time, um, but, you know, first impressions weren't terrible, it's definitely something unique, I guess, uh, Resident Evil 4, I finished that, that was, uh, I never got to play Resident Evil 4, because at the time when I was playing it, it was on my buddy's GameCube, and I think it eventually came to PS2, I might have that wrong, but, uh, I'm sure it did, it's came, it seems like it's come out multiple times, but I just never, played it other than the one time and I don't think I got out of the village uh, section of the game like the first section before you go to the castle and all that I, I never got to that part but uh, so this was like brand new to me and it was uh, it was a fun time it looks incredible the graphics are fucking phenomenal gameplay is dope story is it's odd because this seems this is old this is like 2004 and this seems like it's the story that is with Resident Evil 7, you know? Not Resident Evil uh, 5 and 6, which get even more crazier, but like 4 and 7 seem like they're more on the same lines, you know? That's it, I get the same vibes. Especially even back then on the 2004 game, even though it was a lot more lighthearted, uh, this is definitely more Resident Evil 7 vibes with the, with the tones and the lighting and just the overall graphics with the RE engine, you know, it's, it's such a good time. You gotta play it if you're a Resident Evil fan, and it's doing amazing, too. I think it's like at four or five million copies sold, so that's that's awesome. I'm glad it's doing good. Uh, and then I played Horizon 2, which I played it uh, back in like November or December, I think it was, and I just, I got like fucking 10 hours in or something, and you know, it was, um, I don't know what, I just stopped playing it. I think I wanted to play something else and I had to delete it. And I just never got back to it until recently. And that is actually the gameplay that you're seeing. I didn't, I never brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, obviously I played Horizon 2. You've been seeing it for a fucking hour now or so. 45 minutes of Horizon 2. But <laughs> honestly, I was very uh, disappointed in that game. Uh, I really didn't... I, I guess I... The original Horizon was more impressive on the PS4 when that came out way back when versus Horizon 2, which is basically just the same game, except... I don't even I don't remember the first one having such shitty dialogue and just the the characters even though the graphics are phenomenal in Horizon 2 like it's some really next level shit you know with the face and the facial animations but the the script and the plot is never really that interesting you know it really it gets interesting the the third you know three quarters in you know like right near the end last like three chapters or so which kind of, that kind of sucks, you know? That means anybody playing the game has to fight through all this dumb shit that no one gives a fuck about to get to the decent plot, you know? Which I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's 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 kind of disappointing. Uh, and the gameplay. Gameplay, the animations, like the overall movement, you know? Like just the climbing. The climbing was fucking annoying. How it, like... You don't you can't just climb anything. You have to climb these certain things. <laughs> that is so annoying and it just it takes it takes the freedom away from the gamer, I feel like. Cause there's multiple times I'm thinking I gotta go this way and I can't find what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. And then the, like the action as well, it just like felt choppy, like Alloy or I, El, I can't fucking not remember what her name is. I think it's Alloy. I don't care. But she uh she just there's no lock on system so you're just like dashing and and hoping you're gonna hit something and it's mostly ranged gameplay because if you try to try to slash shit you're you're just gonna die and i didn't know i was on a hard difficulty i must have accidentally put it on back in december and i was having a tough time uh that's probably why if you're seeing this and i'm struggling that is why <laughs> i was still on the hard difficulty and it's just a, uh, it's a bitch. I don't know. It wasn't really worth it, but it, it looked really good. And after a point, I just said, you know, I, I need to finish this. I want to get the trophy. <laughs> I want to get the fucking trophy. I done played this much. Let's just finish it. So I did. And uh, and now I, I moved on. You know, I got 40k Dark Tide, and I've started Judgment, which I don't know how I feel about this. And I don't know if I'm really having fun with it. Uh, I'll probably this it's either gonna be in this podcast or next week's is the gameplay I already got the gameplay up from a from a, a live stream earlier today I played like three or four hours of judgment and it was it's a detective game and it's cool you know it has that Sega cringe that you know like on purpose cringe like it's really strange it's a strange game there's some goofy shit that happens in this game that's just it's 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 entertaining i guess but there's a lot of running and a lot of talking and very few battles to where i feel like this is just a detective game and it's not the best detective game in the world i wonder if lost judgment is any better um uh, i got that as well i just never got around to playing these fuckers um but yeah so far it's We'll see. We'll see where it goes. There's like 12 fucking chapters and I'm still on chapter one. So I don't know. And they said it's only like a 25 hour game. So maybe these chapters aren't as long as I'm thinking they are. But we'll see. See what happens. But that's what I've been playing. Nothing too crazy. Uh, Dead Island's coming out in 20 days. That's going to be something awesome. I cannot wait. Can't wait. But uh, I did want to talk about this one game because... Uh, well, first off, uh, Redfall, the first major Xbox title of the year, is coming next month, just so everybody knows. The first Xbox exclusive, <laughs> Redfall. I, I'll, I'll pick it up on Game Pass and tell you guys what's up with it. You know, you can get a real reaction if it's fucking ass or not, but we'll see. That's, that's what I'm skeptical about, you know? Like, Forza and Starfield, I'm more confident in than Redfall. You know, but that that's just me. There's probably a couple other ones that I'm missing. They're probably coming out soon that we'll talk about. But 
we'll see what game pass gets uh the another one uh warhammer 40k bolt gun is a new boomer shooter they're calling anything that's like doom like quake wolfenstein you know those those old school 3d fps games uh they're calling those boomer shooters now so that's that's incredibly insulting why it's not a boomer shooter i like those games too i'm not a fucking boomer you know <laughs> But uh, it looks awesome, and I just replayed a bunch of classic Doom the other night, so I can't wait to to check that out. That looks really interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's... I have to look it up if it's coming to... Uh, uh, bolt gun. Yeah. Let's see where it's coming. Uh... So it looks like it's on the PlayStation Store. Oh, it's announced. So there's nothing. There's no info on it yet. But we'll see eventually. But it looks pretty cool. Looks awesome. Um, what else was there? Uh, there's rumors of Assassin's Creed Mirage being delayed to 2024. Uh, I think that's good. Ubisoft needs a major hit at this point, And they, they need to knock it out of the park. Um... The Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters are coming April 19th. Uh, they're sold individually and as a bundle for $75. I'm just salty that I couldn't get the fucking the physical version. I wonder if it works on PS5. I'm assuming it does because um, most PS4 games work on the PS5. But that just sucks. I can't get the fucking physical version, you know? I got to get this digital bundle, which I'm not even really... I don't know. It's I might get it at some point. That's what dig, that's the bad thing about digital is because if it's digital, it's always there. You can always go and grab it, you know. So I don't need to get it at all really until I have nothing else to do. <laughs> like that's I feel like that's a that's a downside on on digital. Um and honestly, this we just have one more topic and then we can talk about maybe the, uh, the Call of Duty acquisition a little bit. Um, but Sony might be considering a remote play handheld device for the PS5. Tom Henderson has leaked the development of the Q-Lite. My thoughts, I honestly, I'm, I, hon I, would, I wouldn't mind a PS Vita 2. You know that I buy one before I buy a PS VR 2 just because I'm... I'm just not that big into VR, but you know, handheld, playing all your PS5s is kind of like uh, from the cloud, or maybe even if you could hook it up to your PS5 and transfer the data to your to your handheld, some way, shape, or form, you know, that'd be awesome, you know. But this is, uh, what's the point in having a, a remote play device? I, I just don't get it, you know. I, I really don't. Um, the only thing I can think of is if. Like, say you only have one TV, or maybe maybe you only have one PS5 and it's in the living room and someone wants to watch TV. And you want to play your PS5, so you have your remote play device and they can watch Netflix while you play on your thing. That's the that, that's literally it. That is the only time. That's, and that is saying that like there's no other place for them to watch TV. Like, you don't have another TV anywhere. You know, so that's... I don't know and, and like most kids like when I was a kid I had my own TV and my own stuff you know in my room I didn't like if my parents wanted to watch something they were in the living room that's how that worked and you were in your room like that's most cases in most households so what's the point in having it just I don't get it I really don't it's kind of useless I think it's pointless I would really like a PS Vita 2 that you could just transfer your data to I would buy that day one any day over the PSVR 2 and maybe that's their strategy you know like they have this new idea the PSVR 2 and then they're like and we have this uh, old idea the PS Vita 2 and we're these are both accessories and see which one does better like just just test it you know just test it I, I'd imagine the PS Vita 2 with haptic feedback maybe even you know and an updated screen all that shit would do much better than the PSVR 2. Much better. And it wouldn't be that expensive. Maybe like 250 300 
I'd imagine. I'm, I'm thinking maybe 350, but I don't think that they would go that high. You know, uh, that's just my thoughts. You know, um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, that just sounds so stupid. That sounds dumb. I hope the article, I hope the leak is, is wrong in some fashion and it is just a PS Vita 2 because that would shock the world. It really would. Can you imagine if Sony came back, like, like, of course you could remote play on it. Like, that'd be an option, you know? You can't just have a remote play device. That bitch would get dusty, <laughs> you know? But if you had an actual handheld that you could not only put the data on from your PS5, like, uh, and, and then... And then also, just use it as a remote play device as well. Like, that's a function. Like, it, I don't know. That sounds cool. That sounds like a good idea. But just to be a, a solely remote play doesn't seem realistic to me. Doesn't seem like a device worthy of having, you know? But that's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I've seen most people have this take. You know, they think it's, it's pretty useless. I haven't seen... A couple people post anything yet about it that I think are probably gonna call it out on some dumb shit. But I don't know, maybe they're thinking it's a good idea, but I doubt it. It sounds stupid. Almost no one can think this. This is where my thinking gets stupid. You know, I'll be like, there's no way that someone can think this is a good idea. And then people are like fucking parading for this, you know? And I just don't get it. I don't get it. Hopefully, I'm not disappointed by my fellow YouTubers <laughs> and their stupid ass mindsets i guess i don't know because this it just doesn't make any sense i hope nobody it's like nfts but nfts are like it's common knowledge that m everybody pretty much hates nfts but uh i'd hope that most people think remote play is pretty useless because i think it's it's just a dumb idea you know i really do really do uh the only other thing i want to talk about is the i just wanted to say you know the community like the call of duty community and not even just the call of duty community but the gaming community in general you know they they really have switched up their mindsets because it's almost like they're acting as if what happened five six seven months ago just didn't happen the words they said the articles, everything just didn't happen. Like, I don't have the greatest of memory, but I can remember that. <laughs> I can remember things I care about, I guess. But <laughs> when Microsoft... So, let's just take this back a little bit. So, Microsoft was in the shitter with the Xbox One, right? Peak failure. They almost lost the brand. They come up with the idea of Game Pass. Game Pass is basically just a, a deal it's it's a hella deal they they really they didn't do the day ones yet they didn't really get those going until uh more recently like, like the past three years or so three four years um so you know game pass comes out now they need games to put on game pass they get a deal with ea for ea play uh, they buy bethesda which they say they tell the the european union they say you know we're not gonna we're not gonna take this all these IPs and make them exclusive and then where they, where they turn around and do they're you know they're making Starfield and Redfall exclusive which people have made the argument those are new IPs so we'll have to see what they do with Fallout and uh and the Elder Scrolls if they if those remain on PlayStation then I guess they they took to their word a little bit but anything new out of Bethesda is exclusive and that's kind of that's kind of going back on what they, what, you know, Phil Spencer's uh, going off, you know, trying to be inclusive with gamers. Everybody should be able to play everything, da 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 all that bullshit. And then he's just saying, and people are even saying, like, Phil Spencer's just saying what he has to say to get through this. Like, you, you're applauding shitty business politics? Like, this, this is not good. We should be talking about the situation here. But anyway, going forward, they go and they want to buy Activision. So... This throws up a bunch of red flags. They want to buy it for $70 billion. They want Call of Duty, Diablo. They want it all. And they already, got, they already got a bunch of shit. You know, they got the Doom guy. They have huge, iconic figures. The Elder Scrolls, Fallout. 
they got they got so much from Bethesda, right? And now they want to get Activision. They want Call of Duty. They want Blizzard. They want uh, so Overwatch, Call of Duty, Doom or uh, Diablo, and pretty much just anything else Activision has, right? That's uh, that's not only one of the biggest like looter shooters, Overwatch 2, and now kind of Call of Duty as well, but. Call of Duty is also the biggest FPS game. It just broke records. And we want to give this to a platform holder. Does this make any sense? I don't think it makes sense. I think this is an overreach like a motherfucker. <laughs> like a motherfucker, man. It, it doesn't... It doesn't make any sense. And people back then were saying, you know, because Microsoft said as long as there's a PlayStation console, Call of Duty will be on PlayStation. That's what they said, right? and everyone's calling bullshit some people are saying you know trying to defend it like they said it they said if it's always the playstation then it's gonna be on playstation you know that's that's what they said so you know that's people argued both ways right and then they you know sony was kind of putting up a fight trying to block it i don't know if that just ruffled microsoft's feathers or if you know their pure intentions were to try and get this bitch because <laughs> then they gave a deal to sony saying you know, you have 10 years. We'll give you 10 years that it is on PlayStation. We, you know, sign this. We cannot, you know, go out of this contract. We're going to 10 years. You, I'll give you 10 years. And Sony denied it. They just want to continue to block it, right? And now it's, it's, it's continued on to this argument that, like, like this 10 years is probably going to be a thing. Like, if they get it, they'll give Sony 10 years. To, to get a competitive uh, FPS shooter to go against Call of Duty. Where five, six months ago, if there's always a PlayStation, it will be on PlayStation. Now it's changed to you have 10 years to catch the fuck up. That's what you got, Sony. They, like, this is, this doesn't, this just doesn't rub me right, you know? This looks like some, some fuckery, you know? And I don't trust Microsoft, you know? And, to say that, to even say you have 10 years to establish a whole entire FPS brand and pretty much basically, you know, these game development cycles take so long now, it take maybe like five, six years to pump out this this good, like a like a good FPS game that can rival Call of Duty, you have about five, six years. So you have one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. You know, and I think nothing can compete with an established brand it's call of duty it's be that would be like having jordans and then any other sh like a new brand new shoe brand comes out everybody will say it's the the knockoff jordans you know that's just how it would happen you know it's, there's unless call of duty goes down in the shitter and this game is just fucking phenomenal that's they'd have to take advantage of call of duty stupidness which i think hopefully microsoft will fix or make it worse who knows but I don't know. I, I just don't know what. I don't know what to 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 think of this. And then people are just like thinking it's like an expectation now. Like just get it out of the way. Get them. Give them Call of Duty. They got ten years. They can do that. They can do it. They can bring SOCOM back. It's like SOCOM. Really? You think SOCOM is gonna compete with Call of Duty in 2023? I mean, I don't know. But I mean, they gotta. They'd have to do a big ass facelift. You know. And some people are saying, oh, resistance. Resistance. I fuck resistance. I didn't even like resistance that much when I liked resistance. You know, and you want to bring it back. I, I just. It just seems like people are saying anything to get this going. You know, and have we have we not seen Battlefield? Battlefield has been trying to compete with Call of Duty for over a decade, and they haven't they haven't even scratched an, an inch of Call of Duty's dick. They really haven't. You know, they had some good. IPs like the Bad Company series and Battlefield 1 was praised, but other other than that, and Battlefield 3, they really, it's really just been a little dry, you know, compared to Call of Duty, of course, you know, that's just like a phenomenon, and it just seems stupid, you know, I think it's very unwise to give Microsoft so much power in the community in general, you know, I could be wrong, I could be completely wrong, but I'm getting negative zone vibes in this bitch, and Honestly, it's it's 
it doesn't make any sense why Sony is getting all this negative attention. I'm like, I'm not a super big, I have all the consoles. I'm, I have PC, the Switch, everything. I'm not a fanboy about anything. I'm looking at it at a logical perspective here, okay? What has Microsoft done in like that we can kind of look at in a shady perspective, right? You had the Windows, that does they that's a monopoly that i don't understand to this day everything is windows everything every office building every every hospital every everything everything that has a fucking computer is usually windows i don't understand how they did it i'm sure steve jobs was pissed but like it's i don't know how they got away with that i really don't then they go into the 360 you know we jump forward they have the xbox they make a sequel to the xbox the 360 they even set, they have the goal to put it in their fucking documentary about the Red Ring of Death that they just wanted to beat PlayStation. So either they, they, either they thought that they had to, to go a year early from PS3 to be successful, or I, I just don't see, you don't, they didn't need to, I feel like, I feel like they really didn't need to, to launch a year, or maybe they did, I don't know, but either way, to launch a year early they were pumping out systems like fucking candy and a lot of them were defective a lot came out defective it was like a a 55 percent uh turnover like decent consoles the rest were just uh put into this corner and somehow still got sold i don't know how that worked um but they they fucked up they they had a huge fuck up and they had to do this huge warranty deal that would I think cost the company like uh, uh, 1.5 billion dollars, somewhere around there. It might even been higher than that. It might have been 2.5. But you go forward with that, they somehow redeem themselves with exclusives and Call of Duty and just just out of pure coincidence that call, that PlayStation was kind of going through it those first couple of years. And uh, by the end of the 360, they killed their own brand. You know, Halo and Gears were kind of on the down low. Um, and then you, they pretty much just had Call of Duty, which was slowly about to turn over to the PS4. And they were centered on Kinect and family and kids. And it just, it was not, it was like the, a corporatized version of gaming, you know? And I never got in, I never got into it. You know, I'd always go to the, like the Microsoft E3 showcases solely for call of duty to watch the new call of duty uh campaign trailer or campaign mission you know and that was about it everything else was kind of just average content you know and it it stayed that way for a long time you know i got kind of hyped up for the xbox one but then it turned out a lot of their games were kind of bullshit dead rising 3 wasn't as awesome as i wanted it to be but it looked good at e3 uh rise son of rome you know they, they had a lot of mech content for the xbox one and you know obviously the whole f controversy with the always online the you need the connect the connect connected uh, a lot of just bad pr and phil spencer comes in and game pass fixes everything game pass it's the deal fucking game pass he, they're doing it for the gamers they want everyone to be together and then at the same time they want call of duty to themselves <laughs> it's like what Ah, oh, it's it just it's such a big contradiction that makes no sense. That that's the that's the biggest plot hole in the whole story is Phil Spencer saying they want games for everybody, cross gen everything. We're only it would not it wouldn't be profitable. It wouldn't be. I'm like I've been saying this entire time that Microsoft can eat those profits. They can just eat it all, eat everything. It doesn't matter. They have trillions. They don't give a fuck if they don't make Sony's little bitch money. They have big bucks over here. Got big bucks. They could just drain them slowly year after year just until Sony's a carcass of just their own little IPs and they're not they're not substantial enough to really infringe on the Microsoft empire, you know? That could totally be a thing. Who knows? I don't fucking know. <laughs> but then on the flip side, okay? What has Sony done? They had a, they had tried to get in with Nintendo. Nintendo said fuck them. They made a PS1, crushed the market, did fucking amazing, embarrassed the Sega Saturn, right? You had the PS2, 
took over the market. It was an entertainment device that still was just like it was it had the games. It had the game like it wasn't just a DVD player and a CD player that played a couple games. It was a CD player and a DVD player that had fucking 300 games and it was amazing. It was fucking peak gaming and and in my lifetime to be honest there's so many good ps2 games that i mean if i went back now it'd look a little rough but you know back then that was so much content and games were a lot cheaper back then for some reason uh <laughs> and it was awesome and then you shoot to ps3 and honestly i don't get i don't get the hate you know now i didn't grow up in like a, a really rich you know luxurious family you know we had to like i've said before we had to pick our console and we thought about it like a lot about you know we waited till like 2008 to get our system for the family and uh it was between the 360 and the ps3 we all agreed we didn't like the wii it was a gimmick i didn't get into it i played it at school at some point i just did not get into it and uh so it was the ps3 or the 360 and we looked at, you know, 360, you got to pay for online. PS3, you don't. And then we looked at the prices. PS3 was a little more expensive. But uh, I've heard from my cousins that at that point, this was 2008 too. So this is like the peak of the Red Ring of Death. I've heard people going through like three of them, four of them. And it just blew my mind. And I was like, I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> I'll go with the PS3, right? And at that time, we weren't looking at it. I, don't, I mean, we might have. But we really, I don't think we were, that we didn't have really Blu-ray on our mind. Because Blu-ray wasn't as big as it was now or the years after. Maybe in 2008, it, maybe, I, don't, I don't remember. We didn't really buy a lot of Blu-ray though. I don't know. It was like really expensive at the time, the Blu-ray discs. But my point being, in 2006, Blu-rays were a thousand plus. A thousand plus. So... Is it not a bargain to get a PS3 and a Blu-ray player for 600? I mean, realistically, like think about it. And it, like 600 bucks isn't that much if you want to be realistic. Like, yeah, well, think about it. Really think about it. If if you announce a bitch, like uh, I don't know when they would have announced the PS3. Probably like I think they gave him a long time. I think they gave him like uh, they announced it in 2005. So you had from 2005, you had about a year. And a half or so to get some money built up and you couldn't get six hundred dollars you couldn't put away 50 bucks a paycheck like you can't you can't do that like like i know their pr was really ass saying you know we would we would feel like it would be a compliment if you uh got a second job to get a ps3 like that's terrible pr but uh honestly they should have been like well considering blu-rays are this expensive and you know this 600 they should have been more their pr team just sucked because I, I think it's a hell of a deal for the time if you if you you know had the money for that like i don't think our we waited till a price drop i think we waited till it was uh four hundred dollars um we weren't paying six hundred dollars for it but if you had the money for that and you were wanted a blu-ray player as fast as humanly possible like six hundred dollars is a bargain you know i feel like I, I and that's it that's their biggest fault is that they try to pull the ps3 at 600 you know 2011 sure they got hacked but you know everyone's been hacked and if if you did get hacked or like in general like after everything went through we immediately took our credit card information off the fucking off psn like immediately and or cancel the cards too like we it, that's all you got to do this isn't like this this huge ordeal like oh my god sony they were infiltrated like soon as that hits just call your bank and cancel your shit cancel your cards cancel everything and you're good you're fine dandy over with i don't see the fucking problem to be honest like that's i don't know if i'm just coming at it at a real uh realistic adult perspective but you can just cancel those bitches and get a new card and then, you know, I don't know, just put your credit card on uh, on the bitch from that point on. Like, I think that's what I actually do now. I put my credit card on PSN instead of my debit cards, just like because of that. But that wasn't a huge thing. I feel like it, the worst aspect was the downage when it was down for like a month. That sucked. But, you know, I had, I had a bunch of games. I didn't have to play online. 
So, you know, there, there's ways around that. And other than that, that's it. That's it. 2013 on, PlayStation's been rocking dicks everywhere they go. The PS4 killed the Xbox One with their PR team being the... the this is how you share a PlayStation game. Aha. <laughs> like, that shit was funny as fuck. And I just, like... I felt like that was the, the best slap in the face to, to Microsoft. It was just awesome. Like, it was... That is an iconic moment that will never be forgotten, you know? And it's in high definition, 1080p, you know? But, uh... And the PS4 was amazing. Amazing console. Now, with the PS5... Going into the PS5, I do think... They, uh... It's, it doesn't seem as strong as the PS4 so far. Like, we're three years in and we haven't really gotten too much next-gen content, you know, that, that differs from the PS4 generation. We're starting to get it, you know? Like, I'm playing some games that are start Like, Resident Evil 4, it's getting, you know, games are starting to look really good. And like, Warhammer 40K, Dark Tide looks really fucking cool, you know? Like, some games are starting to get the graphic fidelity and the Unreal Engine 5. It's, it's going to look amazing eventually, but it is seeming like it's taking a while, and it's probably because, you know, uh, there's a big shortage, you know, because that whole pandemic and all, so uh, they just had to keep making it accessible to the last generation, slowing this entire generation down, which makes me wonder if it's, this is going to be a longer generation because of that or not. I think it might be, but we're going to have to just see. I could see this generation going to 2028 just because of that, you know? But who knows? Um, but it, it's definitely going to be interesting to compare my collections. You know, the PS5 and the PS4, Xbox, Xbox Series, um, with the Xbox One, all that. But because this one, this generation seems a little lacking. Just a little bit. I don't know. But, I mean, back to what I was talking about. Like, PlayStation's pretty much golden you know they i mean yeah this new ceo is kind of a dumb fuck sometimes and he he says the wrong things and he's not the biggest gamer and all but he doesn't always have to be you know he's he's the upper management he's not the fucking the guy that flips the burgers and makes them taste good you know he's the guy that sells you on the idea which he doesn't exactly have to know how much protein is in the fucking burger he just has to know certain you know it doesn't exactly matter i feel like um compared to phil spencer who just lies about whatever and tries to be dramatic and trendy and i play roblox <laughs> i play roblox because roblox <laughs> i saw that interview and i just thought that was so fucking stupid i'm like you were a grown ass man you are not playing roblox i know you are not playing fucking roblox you are you are no there's no way <laughs> stop saying stupid shit you know, being trendy, you know, putting in a little spot for Roblox. I don't know. I think it's just everything's getting ridiculous, getting fucking ridiculous. I think this deal needs to be shut down. It's going to be up to America, and I don't know how America really feels on it. I guess we're just going to have to see it. Uh, this month is actually when the deal goes through or there's a decision to be made i think the middle of april so we're just gonna have to see on that but but uh man it's it's gonna be something it's gonna be something i think any answer is gonna shock the world like if they, if it gets blocked i'll be surprised if it goes through i'll be surprised <laughs> Because, like, have we... I think we need to go back... Like, because history repeats itself a lot. And I honestly feel like... This reminds me a lot of Atari. And I just... I got this in my head, like, a couple days ago. I was like... Okay, so... Xbox doing this whole Game Pass shit. Their whole business idea is... Basically resorting to quantity over quality. Because... They have about 25 million subscribers. They get 15 bucks a month. And that money is used to develop the games, apparently. And that does... That... You know, if you get a drop in subscribers, you could... These developing 
uh, companies could just lose a lot of money, which uh, could result in iffy games, you know, kind of like Redfall could be, you know, kind of like Back for Blood, even though that wasn't a Game Pass or a exclusive or whatever, but, uh, you know, just kind of half-baked games, you know? That's what their business model is kind of inching towards. Sony puts a bunch of money into something and then charges full price. So there's always, you know, you know you're going to get good quality from Sony. That Horizon 2 kind of sucked. But other than that, for the most part, their exclusives are top notch, you know. Now, Atari basically did the same exact shit. They put, it, they put quantity over quality. And they crashed the fucking market. And that, Atari was the only... They were the main console platform. That that was... Like, there were some other ones, you know? Like you had the ColecoVisions. You had all... You had the, the Magnavox. Uh, but it, it nothing topped Atari for obvious reasons. Everyone knows Atari. It's awesome. It wasn't perfect. And there was definitely consoles that were more powerful. But they just weren't as popular, right? Anyway, they, they eventually took over the market and made quantity over quality they just put out so many games and they're all pretty much so similar you know they would just be like uh uh fucking what placeholder <laughs> placeholder game you know and it'd just be like a, a little edited pixel man you know that kind of looks something sort of like the box art <laughs> and they would all go through some similar type of game you know there's there's some rarities like asteroids was really cool but, like, they just, they oversaturated the market. And I feel like if Microsoft gets all these companies and they go with this business model, I think it's it's going to it's gonna cause a quality issue. I do. I do think that. And I, I think that probably just stems from not trusting Microsoft. I just don't. I don't really trust many American companies at all, really. And I don't know why. I just, seems like our companies suck. We're shady. You know, like, um, if you ever look into the CEOs of America and then you compare that to, like, the CEOs in Japan, you know, the, uh, I forget the, the ratio, but I think it's, like, American CEOs make 300 times what the, a worker makes, and I think it's, like, 10 or 15, maybe 20 times in Japan, you know, there's a drastic difference, like, they're, they're, they'll take, uh, pay cuts at nintendo and sony to to uh to pay the workers and not lay off people like they do good shit and american companies just suck they have to get uh payouts from the government because they fucked up so much and they have to do all these dumb at like the red ring of death situation like their companies just suck over here sometimes and i just don't trust them you know gm terrible car manufacturer look what happened to detroit obviously we all know if you know history you know history i just don't trust america sometimes and microsoft is shady as fuck they're very corporatized not to say sony isn't either but it just seems like they're just not they're not that you know hollywood gaming you know like that fake g4 you know tone i don't know how to describe it it's just like a vibe of smooth talking bullshit like just speaking bullshit you know which I think at a, back in the day when we watched E3, it was kind of like we were into it for some reason, because this new these new streaming things like these they try to do what E3 was like the cheesy dialogue presenting things they try to do it but on a streaming platform and it doesn't really hit the same as like someone coming out to a crowd of people and the clapping and. I really don't know why we were so interested in the cringy dialogue of, of, a, of the presenter, but you know, sometimes we had some cool ones like Jack Trenton getting on. He was, that was awesome. But I don't know. There's sometimes I just don't get gaming, man. I just don't get it. I don't get where it's going. Hopefully things don't get really shitty. Um, I would just hate for gaming to, to crash again. That would really suck. I don't know if it'd be possible in this day and age with PC and and uh, just the multiple consoles that are selling phenomenally. I don't think that one platform holder could crush the market by being stupid, but 
well, I mean, we'll have to see. It, it really would depend on how many people would drop PlayStation just for Call of Duty. How many do you think? I don't think that many. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's really a theory. Like, we really don't know until it happens. We have no idea until it happens. Because there could be a lot of fake fan or fake hater or how would you say it? Like, yeah, like a fake hater. Like, they say they hate Call of Duty, but they buy it every year. Like, they're, those people are out there. They are out there. They get salty when they lose too many matches in a row. And they talk shit about the game to their friends. But really, they buy it every year. Like, that happens. 100%. How many of those people are going to switch just to play Call of Duty, you know? It would definitely be interesting. And hopefully, SOCOM makes a comeback and it's really awesome. Like... Do Battlefield better than Battlefield. Do it. That'd be awesome. That'd be fucking killer. Am I, is it going to like happen? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of any of these topics. What movies are you seeing this week? What games are you picking up or playing? You know, let me know in the comments. It'd be really interesting to know while I play Judgment. Read your comments. That'd be awesome. Um, if you like the content, put your like, subscribe. Be awesome. Come join the Wolf Pack. Obviously, I'm tired. I can't do the outro. <laughs> no, I can do it. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to join the Wolf Pack. Anyway, guys, peace. Bye.